Good. Welcome back for the very last session of our um, conference. And I would like to introduce you to Tobias Kram. He already has given a workshop this morning, so maybe you can uh, already know a bit uh, about his approach. And he will extend uh, today in this session. Tobias is a pianoforte player. He also has a bachelor in musicology. And he is mainly teaching in the region of Basel, but also online. And what I find very um, interesting in his profile and activities is that he teaches from a very young age. So he also teaches Partimento-inspired uh, stuff to children uh, from five, six years old. And that's a bit different from what most of us um, have in daily life. We mostly work with students and put people with already some, some pre-knowledge, at least on harmony or piano playing or intervals, whatever. But um, yeah, Tobias combines them all from a very young age to um, high specialists. And today he will offer us a, an approach based on Furno. And it's all about, if I'm uh, correct, about playing with patterns. And he will def definitely demonstrate all the possibilities um, playing with simple patterns. So please welcome Tobias. <laughs> Hello everybody and thank you Ewald for the invitation to Antwerp. Is the sound not good? No? <laughs> I know it. Oh, on the screen. Should I do? Hello, hello? Closer? Ah, yes, now closer. <laughs> yes, thank you for the invitation to Antwerp. Um, I was here 22 years ago on my very first Forte piano workshop mm, experience with Schoss von Immersdell in the Fleiss House. So it's a city that I'm, I'm that has a story in my life. <laughs> I hope to get to the center today. Still, <laughs> um, yes, and uh, just briefly about um, my travel with Partimenti and all this um, started. Uh, 13 years ago practically teaching and actually 16 years ago with the uh, lecture or with the reading of Bob Yadim's book uh, Music in the Galan Style and to improvisation classes with Rudolf Lutz in Basel I uh, was connected to the then very young Alma Deutscher and I, I feel myself really as a co-student with her and all the children and teenagers I have had the pleasure to work with actually together um, putting in practice playing and uh, playful learning with um, various materials from this um, what we call Neapolitan tradition and I do have um, a lot of questions with me also uh, I, I like to share this with you during my talk um, one question is how is it possible to uh, link this what we have been talking so much these two days this structured practice all these reflections all these um, rules all these patterns to how we can link all this to actually a vocabulary and um, um, a state of mind where we really are creative with music so this was a question that was often asked also by parents um, of children and the children themselves. How can I, how can I just invent nice music? How can I, how, how does this happen? <laughs> and uh, for me then, it was one of my first observations earlier with Alma when we mm, practiced or when we worked on Partimenti that was one part of our interaction. The other part was what she called question and answers, which was a kind of back and forth improvisation. Also given that we were remotely, uh, we were through video conference, and we would, um, she would play and I would kind of respond and she would play again. And first this was really without any, it was just a free space. Um, and I thought, how would I, I didn't think too much actually I just observed how this went and uh, after some months I felt there was a there was going in 
something between the partimento work and her, her improvisational skills. So we can understand this like a structured space and a free space and they eventually uh, became related to my feeling. And this is really where I got very, very interested in this uh, tradition. Mm. Because I felt there is some, there must be something in that tradition that triggers this, this uh, process. Mm. Well, this is just as a preface for those who don't know me. Um, I have shared this a lot of times, but uh, still it's uh, very uh, close to me as a thought. Um, well, uh, I, this is some thoughts on Furno. Furno, of course, is the <laughs> code word for a little treatise that you have access easily to uh, on, on Rob Yedding's website or partimenti.org. It's just a little booklet with some rules, regole, and embedded in the, those rules are ten short or rather short baselines. Um, so if those of you <coughs> want actually now to open that, no problem. Um, I want to start with um, a reflection about melody. Um, there is, uh, in my, often in, when it comes to, um, to, uh, to be creative with music, one approach is to take a tune, to take any tune, folk tune or whatever tune, and to think of um, some kind of accompaniment. That's what you often do also in school, I guess. You, you sing and some instruments will do some sort of accompaniment. And in that situation, the, the, what is the given melody, the element, the melody is something that is on top of all the rest. So, and we are, I think we are very much embedded in this tradition that we, we have um, clear, we have an experience of a, of a melody or of some melodic um, element and we embed this somehow with what we call accompaniment and maybe chords or rhythms or whatever. But the experience, the, the sound experience is always that the melody is on top of that. So it's like a, something that flies on top and all the rest is like a, a ground for it. Mm. And that's quite easy also, I think, to, to imagine, like when you walk out of a concert, you just hum a tune or a melody, whatever. You, this is what you take often, what you take with you from a musical experience. So now, how can it come that we are so concerned with uh, bass lines? <laughs> um, I, and I just was thinking, especially what I will share on Furno, is that mm, if we take this quality of melody kind of down into the bass, into the low register, and <coughs> really appreciate the melodic quality first um, without anything else. We have a, a kind of entrance point from one of our musical needs, which is, I think, is a melodic uh, need, like or need, I don't know. It's like a natural inclination towards melody. Um, <coughs> So, um, and then the next step would be to wonder if uh, we have were concerned with upper melody, if we were concerned with folk tunes and, and also uh, relate tunes to accompaniment, we were implicitly always aware of some harmonic um, procedures or um, rules, actually. And you can, and we are also very aware of the scale underlying the tunes. This is something that you can test with, with really young learners, children. You you sing a tune, and you will, 
alter one note and they will immediately uh, know which note is not correct. So, which means they have um, very young learners have an understanding of an underlying scale, um, which is amazing, I find, uh, just to imagine. And then this understanding of a scale you can um, also take with you when you when you um, when you work with a baseline that you think of it as really something um, that is in that is moving in the in a framework of a scale. So <laughs> and um, so and then only what is nice is to um, to think of a process where you have always you are based on that base melody you you take this as a given element and you start adding something that goes with that melody and it's really a process that can um, happen in your head. The nice thing about this, I, I feel that um, you experience both the both extremes, like of, of a whole. Like the, there is a, there is an element of um, that is constant, that is not changeable, like a center, and there is the element of flexibility. There is an element of uh, opera voice or of several opera voice that move along that are a counterpoint but the counterpoint is is um, the element that is flexible around if that makes sense <laughs> so it's not two elements that are both flexible but it's one element and other elements that are in relation to that given element just a very abstract um, way to say. Um, now, what should we do next? Um, I think I will um, perhaps exemplify this. I find that, <coughs> and I need to drink something, sorry. <laughs> When it comes to um, actually putting this into practice, I recommend you work with um, three different um, aspects or um, sources. <laughs> One is your voice, actually, that you sing yourself. One would be any kind of instrumental sound that you have at hand, keyboard instrument, melody instrument, and the third is actually really your inner ear or your inner voice. <laughs> uh, I like very much the notion of Edwin Gordon, like audi audiation, like um, really in the silence, imagining a sound. Um, so anything like you sing. Da, 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 da. What would it be? just experience a simple interaction between your voice and the instrument. And eventually, I'm sure, when you um, sing, you will recognize that you are able to audiate with your singing a second voice. As you can do this. Um, you can even you can sing this and da, 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 and now only
to sing. Da, 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 da. And just go with the sound that accompanies, um, that was created by the other voice. <laughs> Which is also um, bringing me to a next um, very, sorry, I think fundamental reflection about, about uh, why do we, why are in intervals so interesting or and also important to be aware of? Um, because I think uh, here is not only the question about single intervals, but it's a question about how their how the intervals relate in time to each other. So simply by um, feeling or um, considering the intervals, octave, octave, fifth. Oh, I should play it. Octave, fifth, third, octave. There is a simple. Um, there is already a simple process. That is, if you look at the the level of um, consonants, there is utmost um, consonants, so very stable, relaxed, still, but perhaps a bit less than the octave. Less than the fifth. <laughs> and again, very relaxed. So, and Therefore, you have a little process, you have a little phrase that goes from an opening, stable consonants through some sort of little tension, again to relaxation. And again, this is something that you can feel when you just sing and, and imagine the other voice. And um, it will be like a succession also of colors, perhaps, or just of of moods even. So, um, this is really um, <laughs> some of the very, very uh, um, core approaches I think this, this work can be slowed down somehow um, and you can experiment with it. Um, so now, uh, my slides are, do they work? No? Ah, sorry. <laughs> yes. So here are just some um, keywords, some inviting keywords. Uh, we'll talk about or we have already talked about singing, about think, uh, it's not so, it's more in the sense of this inner ear and play perhaps. Hmm? Play is of course meant as um, a way of um, making sound explicit and later also as, a, as an approach how to to playfully learn perhaps. <laughs> so now, uh, but I want to talk about, I want to um, share a bit about this uh, Giovanni Furno's treatise. Mm, below you see the first example that he puts when, when it, after he has talked about uh, the various scale degrees and what they want. So they, he, he says, la prima del tuono vuole la terza quinta e ottava. The, like the, if you look at the first scale degree of the major scale, it implies that you add a third, a fifth, or an octave to it. This is a very practical language. <laughs> so with this <laughs> um, knowledge then of all these scale degrees, you are able to make sense of these bold written notes. G major first starts with the first scale degree. 
boring for many people uh, if I repeat this from what I essentially in the morning or should I do this again or you can okay <laughs> you can always protest um, essentially very briefly uh, one if I take one voice I decide on which note I start for example the third now I have uh, I take some liberty I went just in parallel motion. It's quite... I stay as closely as possible um, at the pitch of, the, of my initial pitch. If I go... I start on the octave. I must go down. Here from, I have two options, either, or, and then from, or, of course, different options. Now I, I in a very quick way, I I developed two voices and if I play them together in my right hand and I have a little weaving of voices that create mm, again harmonies and with the harmonies different again qualities of relaxation or stable stability and and um, and tension that goes forward um, so this is really um, again um, a brief example how you can work uh, when you look at the whole bass line it's replete of such little groups I can suggest uh, various ways how to group those actually it's I felt that given the fact that all the bass lines are in quarter notes but still in the 4-4 four four meter there first I thought well it's just a walking bass without any structure but then I <laughs> more and more I realized no uh, it's very it's very consciously set in the meter also <laughs> and you can it's um, not really uh, fixed but there is implications for phrasing. For example, what I suggest here is you can easily, of course, include the beginning. But certainly here, you would probably agree <laughs> before you go on. So, which means that it's something that you literally can see as a structure that kind of blinks I, I would have animated it now it blinks to, to your eyes <laughs> is whatever you do before whenever you see this it, it is a cadential pattern and Furno is really very cons uh, concise with this he I, you can imagine like you walk somewhere and whenever you go a step up and then a fifth down you have oh, there is a cadence <laughs> which means you go later in the later examples you better go back and look where did it start to be going that way <laughs> um, key wise here of course it's all in G major but 
uh, later examples will change. So, and we already talked in the morning when it comes to the end. You can easily find nice uh, phrasings and the phrasing itself then serves as a, a way to uh, work on a little segment for a while before you add the next segment. So perhaps um, let's look at the can we cover that? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. As I mentioned, the, the, there are ten examples. Uh, after the first two examples, there is always one additional rule or phenomenon or strategy that appears then in the baseline. But all the baselines are have openings that kind of, in my feeling, um, are meant to be like exemplars of metaphorically saying here is my key here is here is where i am my starting point i am i am now in that key let's present you my key <laughs> so if you walk if you're seeing all these examples it's just saying here we are the second examples examples and you see little differences like really nothing spectacular but it's a bit different <laughs> fourth example then the fifth example is interesting and we need to know that before we already practiced the, um, the cadenza composta but here is twice for scale degree. So with the implication that you won't do the same harmony just twice, what would you what could you do there? It's an example of how Furno also um, gradually extends these patterns. And then the sixth is also very nice. As it walks up to the fourth category and then goes down. Actually, is a, is a pattern in itself that reappears in, in other bass lines. And then number eight. Is um, uh, the second measure is something that is more prominent in endings than I, I expected these to from number one, number two also, or a little bit no, not the number seven. But you have also nice. Um, I'll play this for you. Number one, then number two, in B minor. I skip number three, number five. a half note. Does it all make sense so far or? Okay. Um, I think 
why did I skip number A? Ah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll keep that question. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, there are gaps. Let me provide you with the gaps. Ah, it was just so similar to number one, I guess. Number four has the same as number one. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, let's look. This is actually what I did in the morning. Uh, I was to visualize again. For those who weren't here, the, like the with the blue arrows, that or would be the simplest um, credential pattern that Furno uh, employs. Then with the yellow ones, you go and then with the red ones, which would be was just mm. so the idea of not extending um, so adding but kind of inserting uh, ideas into into a simple structure so another uh, interesting topic that we that links to the talk of or the lesson with Peter in the morning with Palmerini I think the prelude that walks with the same idea but then uh, walks through different keys is um, is here in the number in the example number four and five and I I just extracted the moments where the keys are changed and there is perhaps like various types of, of of these changes. The first one is if I go from C major to dominant. So again the is your is what your eye should be caught on <laughs> and then you go you you look in before and you see oh there's a raised F that can be really easily linked to your experience um, and the second one is relatively you go from a major scale to the scale of the third scale degree to a minor scale so it should be you, th you play anything in, in, in G major and then you go and in my discussion when we when it comes to this I often or we we think about a little bit why do we naturally play B minor and not and it's a bit out of context, sorry. You should really um, imagine that we are embedded in G major and we do this move and the effect is just to, when it comes to the new key, we, we relate this new key to what we just were in, which means that we have, we, we relate the new scale with the sixth, with the minor sixth back to G. So, as includes the G. So therefore, and then the opposite, again, the third up. It's just the other way around. So in D major, in hindsight, the B was the major sixth. Does that make sense for everybody? Like a little switch. 
Then the next one with this one. Again, if you just play through the partimento, you should be or should catch your eye. <laughs> and then you go a little bit further back and you see, ah. What we the semitone down means six five scale degree six to five in a in a minor scale. This is actually what Funo describes. Um, he talks about scale steps. A semitone down can mean six five of a future minor scale, and this is often like thrown into the process, like from out of the blue sometimes. You just come in with that idea and you will go there, <laughs> no matter where you were before. Then the next one is interesting, um, and it took me a while. A statement in E minor. See what is happening, everybody? <laughs> At the end, we are in A minor. But what, mm, where, where should we make this A minor explicit? How does it happen? And it's again with, it's to do with the phrasing. You <coughs> would, uh, naturally, you would probably uh, breathe after. After you land on E, and now, so um, somehow this is in in A minor, and this was uh, one of the moments where uh, I should share this, as I have really worked through this collection with quite quite a few people over the last years. Every, every person tells me something new or tells me or gives me an insight that I didn't have before. I would always, before I, I would say, you see we are in E minor and now we go until somebody came up See, these are just little details. I, I love how, how we're connecting the way. So what I recommend when you study this, actually, um, think of uh, the, the relativity of these moves. So I, I didn't mark this, but think of the, thir the first modulation. Oh, I'm in a major key. This is the way how to walk to the dominant, to the fifth scale degree. But then, Again, Im imagine a new tonic, a new, you are at home in, in any key. How, ah, I can walk by way of the second short pattern, I can walk to the third scale degrees key. So really relatively. And then you create your own partimento with this, which means you create a partimento that starts and ends in the same key. So you have to make sure that you use the moves in a way that you lead back in the end. And uh, if we get some, well, we can probably, I, I can try to give you an example. Um, yes, this is um, just one of my uh, moments I like with Furno is um, here, this is first num from number one. Um, again, if because it's so dense, we go in the third measure. I come from so if I take only if I take only these three notes, scale degree one, six, five. So because six leads to five, I, I, that's the implication. At 
just a very basic one. So uh, if I if I then go to the third number three, this is I transpose to. And in the meantime, I had also I had already done things like. this credential pattern with one, six, five, four, one. So it's like saying, oh, we can combine the two ideas and put them together. So as if it were doing, but no, we repeat and then we do This is really all just uh, ideas because we have really no explicit information. We don't have figures. We have no figures at all in these baselines. Just to make sure I didn't cut them out. There are no figures. <laughs> um, it's simply that something, of course, and then you can add more uh, ideas to this, with the seventh and so on. Uh, uh, but I find this amazing. <laughs> that uh, you can, based on the rules that are written out and then the contextualization of the rules where you also see, for example, with the four scale degree in number one, um, it appears already in three contexts. So one's like four, five, one, one's like five, four, three, and as four, three to one as a printer pattern in one l short baseline <laughs> and if you if you yes if you see this i mean i think you have a lot of um, information already good i managed to talk a lot <laughs> 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 these are all the baselines um well i don't know should i it's just it looks like a lot of notes but it's really how, how many are there? these are all Yes, I didn't touch upon the moti del basso, uh, which are quite, I mean, you know about moti del basso, or you see them in many different collections, of course. Um, I don't know if you like to test me, somebody would kind of touch, would uh, assess this baseline. <laughs> see whether you can write your own furno based on just on, on what you heard me talk does it make sense this is of course all copied You see, I mean, it's just I managed to to end to start and end in the same key <laughs> and to combine different terminazioni di tono. I should also mention the term. Um, so I, I I I think I want to share really one last point again. Um, it's again just a question of uh, how does this all stimulate. Um, what we are all looking for, creative skills. If you work um, with these segments, with these patterns, mm, experiment really with the process of um, trying things that come to mind in a, in a kind of spontaneous way, which can be more really internally, like 
external from an ex from an instrument in, in on a walk or wherever or with the instrument but using this back and forth like you, you get a sensation from what you try you you hear back what you just did you work with a silence in between and you you, you 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 get aware of what you feel do i like it don't i like it but repeat it again eventually record i recommend a lot record what you're doing and listen back to it because m m many of the times that i recorded myself i i felt oh at the m in the moment i felt like oh no i don't like it but later i listened back and i thought oh i understand aha uh -huh. I have a different perspective. I can hear things that I actually l later like, <laughs> and or I can just put it in a different context. But it will be already a process where you uh, emulate these pat patterns on and make them a tool for for uh, creative uh, processes. And and there there is what I think this um, interaction comes into play, which is. Um, inventing, having new ideas, and at the same time mm, building this vocabulary, because you're always, you're always also um, feeding your memory. And, and that's an amazing uh, thing. And also, mm, I've, I've talked a lot about you as a person uh, learning this on your own, but there is a big, big potential also in interaction. So if you work with people with in two or three or as a group um, you can uh, really benefit from another person's uh, reflection or playing back from what you just played or imitating them and putting it together that's also I think an essential point of this thing. good um, yes that's all I hope. thank you